In project one, our team was tasked with choosing a household product in which we would go through the process of reverse engineering. The steps that we followed for the reverse engineering process are as follows. First, we had six people take surveys in which we asked them to use the products. During this time, we asked them general questions about the products. We then assess these questions and create a list of customer needs. Second, we create a poll for the previous interviewees to complete ranking the customer needs in terms of importance. <laughs> With these rankings in mind, we then conducted the con deconstruction process to get a better idea on how the product was composed. Once this is done, we evaluate certain changes that we could make to better the product based on the desired customer needs. So here, you can see our Gantt chart for our team. Gantt charts are important because they lay out detailed schedule times and time frames that uh, assignments need to be done or uh, process need to be done for a, a build or project. As you can see, Memo 1 was due on the 24th and 4th of January, and leading up to that point, all of the assignments that were due on Memo 1, we scheduled out the time and time frames to get it done by the, de the due date, which was the 24th of January. Another thing that is important that you see no. on our Gantt chart <laughs> is the actual functional model. The actual functional, functional model shows a detailed diagram of all the, all the functions, uh, inputs, outputs, uh, and the processes that our fan or product does. Also, a big thing on our Gantt chart is the redesign. The redesign is important because we want to have that done and, and done and completed by our project, uh, our project proposal, so we know what we're going to present to uh, the company or to present to the consumers of what we're making. As you can see here, the, uh, the gray boxes are 100%. That that means that the assignment was completed all the way. The ones that say 15%, 5%, 75%, 30%, 30%, those are just ones that we're still working on because the due date has not passed or has not come up for those yet. So here's our, one of our customer needs interviews. The person we interviewed was Hannah Cavalier. We got her email address and asked her if she was willing to do a follow-up for our final poll of ranking the customer needs that we deemed fit for the final redesign of our product. While she was uh, spinning the fan along its axis, we asked her the question, do you think the placement bar allows enough range of motion to freely place it where you'd like, or would you prefer to swivel? Her response was, it has enough motion to perform for its intended function, but I'd be, I'd be more likely to buy it if it's, if it's swivel. So then we interpret the need as looking into other positioning methods so that the consumer can have the ability to move it however they like. This will come into play on our final redesign of the product. Here to begin, we have figure three, step one, which is the complete USB comfort zone fan prior to deconstruction. Next, I'm going to move into figure four, step two, in which I'm going to remove the side screws indicated by P2 and the side spacers indicated by P3 on the sides of the fan to T-attach the stand indicated by P1. We'll set those off to the side. Next, we're going to move into figure five, step three, in which we are going to remove the front bolts and front bolt nuts to detach the front safety grate from the fan. As you can see, we have fully detached the front piece of the fan. Next, we are going to move into figure six, step four, which is removing the fan blade screws indicated by P7 to detach the fan blades, which is indicated by P8. That is right here in the front. 
Next, we'll move into figure six, step four, in which we remove our figure seven, step five, in which we remove the back screws, indicated by P9 from the back safety grate, indicated by P14 to detach the motor housing subassembly. We then are going to move into figure eight, step six, in which we remove the small red wire from the USB cord and the large red wire connected to the motor from the switch. That's already been done here because we had to desolderize them. But as you can see, this one would connect to the back of the switch and this one would connect into the main panel. Next, we'll move to figure nine, step seven, in which we remove the switches from the back safety. And then the final step is figure 10, step eight, in which we detach the magnetized spinning mechanism 15 from motor coil segment. So throughout this video, we discussed the Gantt chart, the customer needs, and their disassembly to get to our final redesign of our product. So, we kept the same general design of our fan, but we implemented new parts to our product, which to describe this product is a tall swivel mechanism that can make the fan spin vertically, 360, 360 spin vertically, and 360 spin horizontally. So the new parts that we added were the horizontal stand bar, which is right here, which is connected uh, to the base, to the bottom of the base, with screws on the sides. And our next part is the vertical stand pin, which is connected to the horizontal stand bar, but it's, it's welded. And it's three inches into our next part, which is our fan swivel, which will give it that, that 360 horizontal spin. And our final piece that we added is the pin head, which is, so this is a more in-depth view of what you see going on right here. So we have a vertical stand pin that slides through the hole of the fan swivel, which is all connected together with the pin head, which is represented right here, which would allow this part, allow the fan for a 360 spin horizontally. We also increase the base, slide, we increase the base slightly to accommodate for the height of the fan or the increased height of the fan.